so much of what goes on with uh, science now is, is following trails. And so uh, what is available now is for readers to be able to use the BJP articles to look at the links and then go through to the Guide to Pharmacology and link in then to resources for comparative genomics, for, for crystal structures, for uh, sources of chemicals and all those sorts of things. Well that's been an important change I think for uh, the publications in the journal over the, the past year is that we have this table of links that is, forms part of every uh, publication identifying all of the targets and the ligands, drugs that are used and linking it directly into the guide uh, to pharmacology. Our hope in the future is that that information will actually be within line rather than sitting within a table, but this is something that we're going to be developing over the next year or two and trying to uh, improve the journal in that respect. Well, I think 2016 is a very exciting time for the journal. Um, we have introduced a number of changes very, very recently uh, with respect to uh, transparency of reporting of experimental methods. Um, we endorse the ARRIVE guidelines and the ARRIVE guidelines are uh, a series of approaches that one should take in reporting animal experimentation within publications and by following these guidelines uh, uh, within all publications in our journal. What we're hoping is that when others come to try and reproduce that data that they find that it's very easy to do because all of the detail is there. Another thing that we've introduced is uh, are some new guidelines with respect to the reporting of design uh, of experimental work and analysis both in vivo and in vitro data, so covering all aspects of pharmacological research that we publish in our journal. And we're just bedding in those new guidelines. And the idea is simply to improve the transparency with respect to experimental procedure, enabling better reproducibility. It's a very topical at the moment um, with respect to preclinical research. Uh, the clinical world has experienced some change in the way that they report their uh, clinical studies. And really, all that's happening is that that, that um, detail in reporting is moving into the preclinical field and the British Journal is taking a lead amongst journals in terms of ensuring that our authors are presenting their data and results in the best possible fashion. We've kind of been trained to be concise about methods mm -hmm. and that's, that's less useful when people are trying to reproduce it. Yes, of course. And in fact, what, our, what we do in our journal, which I think is, is uh, a very special approach, I don't know many other journals that do it, is that we, whenever you uh, publish a paper, you're always told by the journal there's a very strict word count. And we do indeed have a strict word count, but when it comes to the methods, there is no word count. We want all of the detail, and I really think that by taking this approach, by having this approach to transparency, um, and by not putting limitations on the detail that we provide with our methodology, that many of the criticisms that are out there about preclinical research will eventually disappear, simply because it is possible to pick up a paper and reproduce the experiment and get the same results. The publishing of data that sits on what we call the translational border. It's always been important. That's the kind of research that pharmacologists do, taking early stage preclinical data through to in vivo uh, experimental models and then from there into early phase studies, uh, clinical studies. And that really does very accurately describe pharmacology and the kind of work that we do. And uh, Actually, that very well describes me as an individual, and so I shall be pushing the translational agenda over the next few years. But also, what I would like to do is li like to expand the editorial board uh, a touch by um, recruiting um, a group of individuals that uh, are making headway in their fields, uh, that are international, and they are going to be the leaders of the future in the next 10 years. So I'm actually in the process of recruiting a number of new editors to various areas of focus for the journal. So within neuro, within inflammation and immunology, within cardiovascular, molecular pharmacology, 
Absolutely. All of the areas, mm. what I've done is I've identified individuals who are at that point of uh, becoming the leaders in the field, not quite there yet, and hopefully they're going to be on our editorial board. And uh, I think it's important for us to mentor those individuals into the positions that people like Steve and I are in, and this is one way in which we can do mm. it. Uh, and over 2016, I intend to make some changes to the editorial board in that respect. But we also have a number of new senior editors in vascular pharmacology, cardiac pharmacology. We have a new reviews and themed issues senior editor. Uh, we have recruited a new Chinese senior editor. And uh, this is Professor Yong Ji. And the purpose uh, really is to try and encourage and support uh, increased and improved submissions from China and from Southeast Asia. It's important that we maintain, improve, increase our international reach and we do this by ensuring that our editorial board reflects our readership.